I'm not presenting a CTO, so I should be able to make up some time. Thank you for having me. I just recently finished my interventional fellowship at UCLA, and I've moved to New Jersey, and I'm joining Garden State Medical Group and two active cath labs in a community setting. So I'm going to show you one of my worst complications of the year. This was three months into fellowship. And let's start with his uh, clinical presentation. So this is a 65-year-old male who has a history of premature CAD. He had a prior inferior wall MI in 1997. He underwent a bare metal stent to the prox to mid-RCA at that time, also with underlying paroxysmal AFib. And he was <coughs> representing after moving from New York to LA um, with dyspnea after exercise and very avid um, exercise tolerance at baseline. So he was wrist stratified with an echo stress treadmill, very non-diagnostic. He had an underlying left bundle. His STs were non-interpretable. He only achieved 4.9 mets, and he developed AFib with RBR. The echo portion, portion of it was only notable for mid to distal inferior wall hypokinesis. So he was referred for an angiogram. So here you have his diagnostic angiogram, right radial access. We used a five French tick catheter. And the left system, you're looking at an apicotal and an apicrany view. Really not, nothing to write home about in the left system. There's some mild disease in the OM and the um, septal perforator, but really no major disease to fix that could explain his symptoms. But when you look over to the views of the RCA, you can appreciate now that he has severe proximal edge instant restenosis of that RCA bare metal stent. So the intervention was attempted on this day of the diagnostic um, angiogram, so we stayed right radial. Initially, this is the only picture I'm going to show you about this first attempt of the intervention. Initially, a six French JR4 guide catheter was used. The wire was able to cross was a BMW, but nothing could get past that lesion, starting with a 2-5 balloon, then 2-0, and you know how it goes, 1-5, 1-2. But even a 1-2-5 balloon with guideliner support and a wiggle wire down distally still couldn't cross this lesion. So we quit after 200 cc's a dye, 30 minutes of fluoro, and we planned for laser atherectomy for that proximal instant restenosis at the proximal edge. We, we planned that we would go 8 French, femoral, and we brought the patient back seven days later. His creatinine was fine. So here's the shot of, we went with an AL.75 guide, guide catheter, so it started with an 8-French system, more supportive guide, got our BMW wire down, and then we went with a 0.9 over-the-wire Spectronetic Turbo Elite laser catheter. We did about four runs, starting with 40-40 in our frequency and pulses, went up to 60, still couldn't get this laser atherectomy catheter to get past this lesion. So at this point, our guide catheter was kicking out a lot. We decided to exchange for a more supportive guide catheter. We were out of AL1, and uh, the patient did have a mildly dilated aortic root, so we chose at this point to go for an 8 French AR2 guide catheter. We did the exchange keeping the 035, the 018 wire in the vessel. So the way that we did this was we, placed, we docked the BMW wire, and if you already know this, I apologize, but I think it's an interesting, I think it's interesting for the fellows to hear. Um, you kept your, so we had a short BMW wire, we docked it, and then we placed an 035 exchange length wire into the AL.75 guide catheter. Then we disengaged it, and then we sent the 035 wire out, took out the guide catheter, and exchanged, maintaining the wire in the true lumen um, in the distal vessel. And then we got our 8 French AR2 guide catheter in. And not the worst picture you've seen today, but when you're in the cath lab, this will be one of the worst pictures you'll see. And just put yourself in our shoes. This is an elective case, right? Patient has dyspnea on exertion. This isn't like where you have everybody back up, CTO day, chip day, impella day. It's not that day. This was your, hey, we're going to take care of your lesion. So this picture is even more scary because you met his wife, you met everybody, and you just thought you would take care of it with laser. So at this point, we could run through the algorithm, but I think it's in the interest of time, we're very lucky we kept that wire in there. And uh, the patient's complaining of chest pain now. He's having inferior ST elevations. But luckily, hemodynamically, he was okay. We just started to open up wide fluids. And what we did, so that you've learned two things from the morning sessions, that you could occlude proximally or you could go to the site of the lesion. So we got a 1.5 and a 1.25 balloon down as fast as possible, and we started balloon dilating, going from sequentially large diameter balloons. And these aren't running, but basically, you know, 1.25 
one five two zero, and we got a two five. And what you're looking at here is our. We basically just wanted to stent the proximal to the ostium as fast as possible. So we are going to definitely miss the distal lesion, but we didn't care. We wanted to get the stent in. We, we, were, we were lucky. We got a three five twenty three stent in this segment. And then after that was taken care of, and there's no the extravasation at this point isn't getting worse. What we did Should was I yeah. Should the patients complaining of pain in the STs are up, but I, I bet, like this mm -hmm. is what Jay was talking about earlier, this is a horrific looking stain, mm -hmm. but it's a stain that's stained. Right. This is going nowhere into the pericardium. Yeah. So as extremely discomforting and nerve wracking that it can be to look at, it's not that bad. You know, as I mean, a- It's really not that bad. Right. I, mean, I think you have more time than you think. Yeah. And to instill a sense of panic that you have to immediately start dilating like a mad person and go crazy and try to get things. You have more time than you think. You really should take pause and, and, and figure out the best strategy to still treat that lesion rather than try to bail in a sense of panic. I mean, so I know it's I easier said than done. It's was, easier said than done. But yeah. This is one of the messages yeah. that I think we need to somehow. Yeah. Because I think for the, the nothing... fellows in the audience, I think that the thing to really understand about this situation is this is where you want to stop injecting. Yes. yes. No yes. formal yes. injections. Correct. Right. Stop and, injecting. Is it possible that wires initially might have gone to the stem cell and the thing was going rather than putting a second wire? Possible. Small network and both of them didn't happen. Like many times, an old, even a very old stand. You will have that. The best thing is that as you are there already, put a second wire with a very acute J so that the tip will not cross, the belly of the J crosses the arteria and the room goes right away. Yeah. I, then what, I bet that what was happening. There's no way that if the, this kind of stenosis, that the balloon will not go 1.25 or anything. I think you are wired from the very beginning of going through the stand set. Hmm. I, I, I would tend to agree with that. We, we've seen a very similar case to that. And, and it, it raises the question, how were you able to get the balloon through this time? Do you think... So I think the laser, yeah, so I think the laser did make, even though we couldn't get the 0.9 laser catheter passed, Think I think the laser did work. modify and debulk, and we were able, what you'll see in these findings now, treating that area that we left, we were able to get 3.0 NC balloons, and we delivered a 3.08 to the mid-segment. And at this point, we knew that we had a spiral dissection distally in that, in that shot that I showed you. And again, the extrav isn't getting worse. Like uh, Dr. Prashad said, we have time. And so I don't have the IVIS movies for you, but I can tell you that there was a distal spiral, di the spiral dissection extended distally, as well as we had missed the ostium, and there was an expanding intramural hematoma. So we went, so, the, so basically post IVIS PCI, really, IVIS really helped, and we stented the di distal segment, covered the spiral dissection distally, and then we went back and took care of the ostium, which was key. Um, and this was final angiography at the end of our case. So we've already kind of covered this and potential causes. So I will um, kind of, you know, it's important to remember that laser is a debulking strategy for ISR that is associated with perforation, and it's important to keep that in mind. But here it was probably guide catheter induced. Um, we've kind of touched upon this, but I just wanted to emphasize maintaining true lumal distal wire position is really important, especially for the fellows. If once there's a dissection, once you have no vessel, um, you have acute vessel closure, that distal wire, always remember to maintain wire position and avoid further contrast injections. And we've talked about management, so I'll skip this, but you know, we ordered a stat echo. We also got a CT angio of the chest to make sure that the patient didn't have an ascending aorta dilation. Um, be prepared for tamponade. We had a pericardiocentesis tray ready. And if all these above measures that we've heard about today failed, you've seen some really experienced operators talk about PERF. But um, in, in early career and at the fellow level, always be remember to get your sur surgeons on the phone, let them know what's going on. We brought the patient to the cath lab the next day. We were very worried about the um, ascending aorta. Just wanted to make sure he was okay. And this is how he looked just 24 hours later. So you've heard a lot, and I just wanted to leave you with this. And if you don't know what that is underneath my name, come to the social media session tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. Sani. <laughs> Uh, 